Today's scripture reading comes from uh, two portions of the scripture. The uh, first one comes from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. It reads, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. And the second verse comes from Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It reads, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of the soul and spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. This is God's word. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Father, we come before you and we pray, Lord, that you would teach us Lord, open up our eyes, open up our hearts, so that we can receive your word into our lives today. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are continuing in our series called The Followers of the Way. And in this series, what we're doing is we're looking at the story of the original Christians, the first Christians in the book of Acts, and just seeing their lives and seeing how they lived their life, how they were used by God, and asking the question, how can we do what they did back then? You know, in, in the book of Acts, especially Acts chapter 2, it describes um, the, the first believers. Um, and before they were called Christians, before uh, uh, the church was an institution, it was just a bunch of people who believed in Jesus. But not only did they believe in Jesus, they actually followed in the way of Jesus. They, they emulated the lifestyle and the patterns of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're asking the question, how can we follow in the same patterns of the original church, the original followers of Jesus? Like, what, what patterns um, did they follow? Like, what, how did they live their lives? Like, how did they organize um, their, their family life, their community life? What did they value? What did they commit their lives to? Because I believe that, that if we are to recreate what they had, that special community and special impact they had back then, we, we need to follow in their footsteps. So the, this is a diagram of the 10 things that the early church committed themselves to. This is, was their pattern of life. I believe that if we follow this pattern of life, that we can come close to experiencing what they experienced in, in the uh, New Testament era. The focus today, what I want to focus is on is, is this little icon here, which is the Bible. And in Acts 2, it says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. And the idea is this, that Jesus, when, when he um, was leaving them and, and before he ascended up into heaven, he gave these disciples the Great Commission. And he says, um, go make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But I want you to teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. Teach them to obey. And so these, these disciples... This is what they were trying to do. So they gathered up everyone and they said, like, uh, Jesus taught us, we want to teach you. And we want to teach you not just so that you would know the stuff, we're teaching you to obey, to apply, to observe all the things that Jesus taught us. So that's what the early church did. They gathered together and they, they were devoted to the apostles' teaching. They were devoted to uh, studying the scriptures and, and the words of God. And for, for us, this is something that I believe that is, is crucial and is maybe the, one of the most, if not the most important thing that we can do, that we could devote ourselves to. I think the best gift that anyone ever gave me was when I was a brand new Christian, I had people teach me the importance of the Bible. People taught me how to, how to read this book, 
how to study it, how to meditate it, but but more than that, how to how to enjoy it, how to get it into my life. That that gift that someone gave me about how to appreciate the Bible was the most important gift that anyone ever gave me. It, it, it was a life-changing gift. And as your pastor, if I can give you one gift, the gift I want to give you is the gift of learning how to read, study, but appreciate God's Word, to delight in God's Word. LifeWay Research commissioned a 10-year study on what factors cause people to grow in their faith the most. And this was the most comprehensive study of, of disciple-making uh, in the modern era. And this is what, this is what they found out. They, they said that after 10 years of, of surveying and studying how people grow in their faith, they, said, they found that, that reading the Bible— matters more than anything else. That if you could get a person, a new disciple, to, to learn how to read the Bible on their own, that is the best thing you can do for them. That it's, it's more important than even going to church, participating in a small group or service project, or, or it's, it's more important than, than, than small groups, accountability groups. It's more important than anything. If you could get a person to read the Bible that is going to make the biggest difference in their life. One of the things that I, I, I realized over the years is that your faith and your, your impact, it's heavily correlated with the level of your devotion to the Scriptures. If you want to grow in your faith, if you want to raise your kids in a healthy Christian environment, if you want to have a healthy Christian family, if you want to be used by God to make a difference, the best thing you can do, the best investment is for you to learn how to not only read and study, but learn how to enjoy the Scripture. Learn how to absorb it and, and put it into practice in your life. That we, we need to be devoted to the Scriptures. You know, devotion refers to commitment, but it's more than commitment. It also refers to, to love and enjoyment. You know, in the, uh, in the Psalms, you know, David talks about that, that God, your word is like, is like honey to, to my lips. Uh, God, I long for, for your word. Uh, it's honey sweeter than, than the honeycomb. And it's this enjoyment. It's just this enjoyment. Like do, we have to come to this place where, you know, it's not it's not cough medicine. It is actually it's it's um, it's honey. It's it's dessert. It's something that we enjoy. You know, a lot of us we we struggle with a lot of things. We all have our personal struggles. A lot of us we we lack direction in life. We're trying to figure out what to do. We we feel inadequate. We have our own insecurities. We have shame and guilt, worries and fears. We have anxiety. We worry about what people think of us. We worry about things out of our control. We have bad habits. We have negative behavior patterns. We have negative thoughts in our lives that are destructive. Uh, we, we don't, we're unloving. We don't make a difference out in the world. So I mean, we all, we, we deal with all these different things. And, and let me tell you, you know what the solution is? To, to that is, right? This is the solution, the Bible. The Bible addresses all those things, all those, those issues that, that we struggle with. The Bible has already addressed those issues. Like if you're, if you're looking for direction, you feel like you, you, you lack direction, you don't know which way to go, like this is it. This is the answer. In Psalm, Psalm 119, it says, thy word is, is a light unto my path and a lamp to my feet. It's like God, your word is is, is guidance. Um, some of you feel like that you have some uh, internal problems and and you're dealing with a lot of stuff. You know, the, the Bible says the word of God is 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 living and active, 
sharper than any two-edged sword. It, it's it's not a dead book, not a history book, it is, but it's powerful. It's life-changing. Uh, Romans 12, 2, it says that we are transformed by the renewing of our minds. When we study the scriptures, it, it changes us. Um the Bible, some of you guys struggle with bad habits and, and sin. Uh, some of us, all of us, we, we all struggle with, with, with sin. But what is, what is the protection? The Bible is. Psalm 119, verse 11, it says, I have hidden in your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And we see that if we have God's word in our heart, it protects us from, from going astray. And ultimately, what I want to say that, the Bible is sufficient to equip us for everything that God has planned for us. It equips us. Some of you feel right now that you are, you know what God wants you to do, but you feel like you are unequipped. And I just want to say that all that you need is in here. The Bible is sufficient to equip you for every part of God's plan for your life. Like I've met so many different pastors going on, uh, you know, when we go to the mission field, I meet these pastors in these villages that they are uneducated. They never went to school. They never went to seminary. And and literally the only book they have ever read was, was this one, was the Bible. And God used them to lead their whole village to Christ and to start a movement. And, and this is, I just want to tell you that this is more than sufficient for to prepare us for what God wants us to do. I want to jump into 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse uh, 16 and 17, and I, I want to read uh, again what that says. And I want to talk about how the Bible works in our life, what, 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 what the role of the Bible is. It says, All Scripture is God-breathed, and it is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. This verse tells us first that the Bible is not a man-made book. It is from God. It is, it is God-breathed. All scripture is God-breathed. It's not an interpretation of a man uh, that God inspired these words. We believe that the, the, the Bible we have is the authoritative word of God given from God to us, that it is our instruction, is our manual for life. But it also has different roles that it plays. Uh, in this verse, it tells us that it, it does several different, plays several different roles in our life. And it says it is useful for, for, for number one, useful for teaching us. Uh, two, useful for correcting. Or, or Two, it's useful for rebuking. Useful for, number three, for correcting. And then, fourthly, it is useful for training in righteousness, resulting in, it says, that so that the, the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So I want to show you a little um, illustration, a diagram of how I understand it. You know, I'm a visual person, and I like to draw things out to, to help me make sense of, of some of the principles in the Scripture. So let me show you uh, a, uh, a diagram I came up with. So the, this is a diagram, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. It says, all scripture is uh, breathed out by God. So God gives us uh, the, the, the scripture. Um, he inspires the Bible, and God gives us the scripture. And it is given to to man. So that's that's uh, us. Um and then it says the scriptures is useful for, for four different things, or is profitable for four things. For teaching, for rebuking or reproof, for correcting, and for training in righteousness. So th this, is, this is how um, I understand uh, this, that um, the first thing that the scripture does is, it, is uh, it teaches us, right? It's useful for teaching, number one. So it's like it gives us, um, it shows us how to how to walk on the path that God wants us to walk on. Okay, it's useful for teaching. It tells us, okay, this is this is the, the the way that God wants you to go. You know, the word is a light unto my path, um, and a lamp to my feet. So, but we know that uh, as humans, we don't follow God's path perfectly, and we tend to stray. We tend to stray from the path, and when we stray, this is actually when the second 
use of uh, the scripture comes in, 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 in hand. It says, it is useful for rebuking or reproof, which means that when you go astray, it tells you like that, hey, this is, you're, you're getting off target, um, and it rebukes us. It tells us, it, it points out that we're, we're, we're wrong and that we have to um, get back on target, okay? So, but not only does it tells, tell us what we're doing wrong, it actually helps us to get back onto the right path. So that's number three. Um, uh, it shows us how to, we return to uh, the path. And so that is that is correcting. It's useful for correcting. So the Bible teaches us when we go astray, it rebukes us, and then it doesn't just rebuke us, but it also shows us how to get back on the path. So it corrects us. And then the the fourth use is it it's training, right? It says training in righteousness. Not only does it show us uh, the path to go, it actually prepares us. It trains us. It it it, it equips us. Uh, training in righteousness. This shows us how uh, we can be used by God, right? And it says, uh, so that, you know, the Bible is is given by God. Um, God breathe is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be, quote, fully equipped for every good work. That that this is all we need to fulfill God's will for our lives. So uh, let me draw a picture of what that looks like. So now that we are fully equipped, equipped for what? For every good work. To love God, love our neighbors as ourselves, to go and be ambassadors for Christ, to go and make disciples. So I'm going to draw a little uh, little globe here that... Um, God uh, equips us so that we could go make a difference, right? That we are fully equipped for for every good work. And that's a a picture of how I understand uh, the um, this passage. So, so, so this is it. This is this is what the Bible does. It it teaches us the way that God wants us to go. When we go astray, it Tells us, hey, you're you're get you're you're going off road there, like this is the wrong way there. You got a detour, uh, rebuking. But it shows us how to fix ourselves. You know how to get back on track. Correcting, it's used for training and righteousness to prepare us for to become the person that God wants us to become, so that we're thoroughly equipped for everything that God wants us to do. In Acts two, it says that the Scripture equips us. Fully, thoroughly equips us for every good work. That that everything that God wants us to do, to make a difference in our world, to 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 love our neighbors as ourselves, to uh, raise up godly children, to go and 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 uh, care for war- orphans and widows, to make disciples of all nations, all the different things that every good work that God wants us to do. It says that it, the Bible is sufficient to fully equip us for every good work, not just some things. You know, the Bible isn't doesn't just make us a better person, but the Bible equips us for everything that God wants us to do. That the Bible is sufficient. All you need is here. He, Hebrews 4.12 talks about how powerful the scripture is that if we get it into our life it's going to transform us it says for the word of god is living and active that is not it's not a dead book it is living and active it's powerful it's life-changing sharper than any two-edged sword piercing to the division of soul and spirit joints and marrow discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart it says the word of God is is living and active and powerful. It is like it is is sharper than any two edged sword. And and that word there, it it, it talks about this um, this Roman sword, this type type of sword that is called a machaira, that is a precision instrument. It is not like a a huge claymore broadsword um, that that Braveheart used 
but it's more like a dagger. And it says the word of God is like this sharp scalpel that if you get it into your life, it is powerful. And it's going to, it says it'll, it'll, it'll cut through to the center of who you are, to the place of dividing of the, the soul and the spirit. And it says it's going to get into your heart. And it says it, 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 it discerns the thoughts and intentions of your heart. It will open up your soul and it will show you the parts of your life that that needs to be worked on that if you get the scripture into your life it's going to radically change you from the inside out it is powerful now this is this is so powerful a lot of us were struggling with things and we don't realize the answer is right here that if we get god's word into our hearts God's word is going to do the work of transformation in our lives. So we need to be devoted to the scripture. I, I know you have a lot of objections or um, maybe some excuses about why you don't read the Bible. I know you believe that the Bible is true, but most people don't read the Bible, at least not on a regular basis. Uh, or have a intentional plan. Like you don't have a, a reading plan or a study plan. You don't have great habits in this area. A lot of you say, you know, I tried it. I've been trying to read the Bible, but it's, it's kind of boring. It's kind of hard to understand. I don't get it. I try and I, it, you know. Um, let, me, let me just encourage you with this. There's uh, twice in the New Testament, Jesus um, uh, use, uh, teaches these parables about pearls the first one is the, it's called the pearl of great price and then the second time he says do not do not toss uh, your your pearls before pigs or, or do not throw pearls to the swine okay and and a pearl is you know we use it as jewelry and it's very expensive uh, but if you if you look at a pearl and you you're you, with the untrained eye you you it might not seem um, like you might not know if this is real or if it's if it's you know a fake a piece of plastic or if this is super expensive so jesus said he told this parable um, about the pearl of great price he said there was a merchant who was looking for fine pearls like he knew what he was looking for he knew what pearls were expensive and he says he found this one that was beautiful and he was amazing he knew the value of this pearl and he says he went away and he sold everything that he had and excitedly um, he, he sold his house, he sold everything that he owned so that he could buy this pearl because he realized that this pearl was so valuable that it was worth it for him to, to, to sell everything to get this pearl. Um, on the contrast, he says, do not throw your pearls before pigs. Do not throw your pearls to the swine. That these pigs, they see this little rock, they're like, what is that? Like, it's not food. I don't want this. So they ignore it. And it, it's just lying there in the mud. They don't appreciate this. And I want you to get that picture in, in, in your mind. That this right here, this is the pearl. This is the pearl of great price. This is like, you know how valuable this is? You know how valuable? You know how life-changing this is? That this has the power to revolutionize your life and to help you find God's path, to prepare you, to, to change your character, to transform your life, and to fully equip you for every good work that God has in store for you. This is how valuable this is. This is how valuable this is. But sometimes we're like those pigs. God's tossing pearls before the swine, and we look at that, we're like, what, what is that? That's just a book. And we don't appreciate it. And it's because, and it's nothing wrong with, with the Bible. It's, it's something wrong with us. That we don't realize how special and important that the Bible is. And I just want to say this. If we're ever going to become the people that God wants us to become, if we are ever going to make a difference in our world, it starts here. It starts with us devoting ourselves to the scriptures, reading it, studying it, meditating on it, and mostly obeying it. 
I believe if we do this one thing, if we become a people that is, that is devoted, that if we all devote ourselves to the scriptures, that is going to change our lives. It's going to change our church, and God's going to use us to make a difference in our world. So let me give you some, some next steps, some, some challenges. So the first thing is this. I want to challenge each and every one of you to take responsibility, to take it personally. That devoting yourself to the scriptures is something that you have to do for yourself. This is not something that someone else does for you. Today, there's a lot of things that we can't control. You know, right now we can't control um, if we're meeting together, uh, you know, in a worship service. We can't control the, a lot of things. We can't control our circumstances. But the thing that you, you do have control over is you have control over your, you have control over if you're reading the scriptures. You have control over if you're putting in the time to read, to study, to, to meditate on God's Word. That is completely in your control, that you are responsible. This is, this, is, this is your job. God has already done the hard work of giving you His Word, speaking through the prophets, to record this, to pass it down. Now it is our responsibility to get this into our lives. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to take responsibility that if you're not devoted to the scriptures, it is not someone else's fault. It's, it's, there's something, you have to make the decision. You have to make the commitment. So the first thing is to accept responsibility. Take responsibility for your devotion or lack of devotion for the scriptures. The second suggestion is that you become intentional. You, you become intentional about reading, about meditating, about applying the scriptures into your life. That you need a plan. You, 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 need, to, you need to have um, like a Bible reading plan. You need to focus on building good habits in your life so that you could get the scriptures in, into your life. So be intentional. Have a plan. Have a reading plan. Um, if you need help with a, a Bible reading plan, a Bible reading uh, program or anything like that, we're, we're happy to, the, to help you find one. The third suggestion is that you ask for help. Ask for help. Don't do it by yourself. You need a community. You need mentors to show you how to study the scripture, especially if you're new, especially if you never tried it before. You, you, need, you need to have a, a, a community, but, but not just a mentor. It is helpful to have a community of other people who are at, at your stage um, that you're learning the scriptures together. You know, that we have different groups. We have a Thursday night group. We, we're, we're starting some, some what we're calling DNA groups, for Discipleship, Nurture, Accountability, where we're reading the scriptures together. So ask for help. We're happy to help. The fourth suggestion is that you learn to develop a taste for a scripture. Learn to delight in the scripture. That, that not only, uh, like a lot of us, we read the Bible as a textbook for looking for answers, but we have to... It's it's a duty. It's 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 something that you have to do. It's homework. You know, it is. Um, it, it's like cough medicine. Like no one delights in cough medicine, uh, but something has to happen where it changes. Where you go to the scripture, not just for answers or not just because you're supposed to, but you start to delight in the scripture. So you have to learn to develop a taste for the scripture. That you, that scripture could be something that you take delight in. That it becomes sweeter than honey in the honeycomb, like, like David says. So learn to delight in the scripture, develop a taste for the scripture. And then the last suggestion is that you teach others. Like the, the best way for you to grow is actually in, in trying to teach others. Like some of you right now are having a hard time trying to figure out um, how to understand the scripture for yourself. You know what? One thing that you can do Try to read the Bible so that you can teach someone else, especially you parents out there. Read the Bible thinking how you can teach your kids this story and 
as you are teaching this, as you are trying to absorb the scripture to teach others, um, you absorb it in a different way, and it actually helps you become a better student yourself. Right now, one of my favorite things that I do all week is I meet with a, a group of guys um, in my DNA group, Discipleship, Nurture, and Accountability. There's, there's five of us right now. We meet online, and we're all doing a Bible reading program together. Uh, we're reading a chapter a day through the New Testament. Uh, we're journaling, uh, doing this little Bible study method. Uh, real simple. It's called He Sees Me, and, and we, we do this journaling. Um, we have scripture uh, memorization, and we, we, we get together, and we keep each other accountable, and, and we, we uh, share insights each and every week. And this is amazing, because we've been only meeting for, for a couple months now, and for some people, they've been going to church you know, for a long time, and they're saying, man, this is the first time I'm actually reading the Bible uh, systematically. I'm growing. I've never studied the Bible before. I've never journaled the scriptures, and I'm just feeling I'm growing. Some people like, I never memorized the scripture before, and it's really helping me. And, and it's amazing. We get together, and you know what? It feels like Acts chapter 2. Just seeing these guys grow um, and get a heart for beginning to get a heart for reaching out to to their neighbors, their family and friends, and, and God is using them. And it feels like Acts chapter 2. And, and primarily, it's because we are getting together and we're devoting ourselves to the scriptures. And it's something that you can do. The discipline of, of Bible reading, it actually correlates with every other spiritual um, spiritual discipline. Like, if you don't read the Bible, you're not going to pray. If you don't read the Bible, you're not going to share um, share the gospel. If you don't read the Bible, you're not going to be a generous person. If you don't read the Bible, you're not going to, to love your neighbor. And, and they said that the discipline of Bible engagement impacts every other spiritual discipline in, in your life. If we want to experience the move of God today, like in Acts chapter 2, we need to start doing what they did. And one of the things that they committed themselves to was they, they committed themselves to the scriptures. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. So that's my encouragement to you, that we need to be a, a people that devotes ourselves to the scripture. And I believe if we do that, God will transform us and that he'll use us. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you've given us your word that shows us how to live the life that you want us to live, that equips us and prepares us for every good work. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us to take responsibility, help us to learn to, to not only um, read your word, but to delight in it and to apply it into our lives, Lord. We pray that, that you would change us and that you would use us, Lord, to glorify you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.